This is the Real Melbourne Podcast, the central point of this beautiful city's culture. I'm Alex Dickens. And I'm Brian Hughes. Welcome again. Yes, bro. And we got a special guest in the building, man. Um, uh, while everyone else is kind of taking a bit of a break, you know, during this COVID time, everyone's kind of been slow on the content. This man is an exception to that, man. Dropping a lot yeah. of stuff. The COVID care package, music videos left, right and center. A little bit of skits here and there. Yeah. You know, always entertaining yeah. on the IG. Yeah. We got my man, Double O Smooth, in the building. Welcome, my friend. How you doing? Yeah, well, it's a man. pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. Bro, I had to get you in, man. Uh, like from the first like kind of moment I met you, like obvious, you know, heavy spitter. Yeah. And you would expect that, you know, being from Philly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just kind of like the life of the party as well. You know, yeah. it was a party vibe. It yeah. was you know, a great atmosphere. So like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to have you on the podcast and, you know, get into some things, man. Sweet. But first of all, like, how have you... How, how's uh, COVID been treating you and how's, you know, everything kind of going on in your life, bro? Hey, man, like... For real, as soon as that shit, like, started, I got sick, like, right when the COVID shit started going on the news every day. Mm -hmm. You're right. You mean, like, I got sick with a sinus infection. So I'm bugging out. Like, I'm thinking I got <laughs> some shit. You feel me? And then, like, I was sick for two weeks, and that sucked. So I was in the house anyway. And then I was like, oh, shit, I got to stay in the house, like, more now. Yeah. Like, usually when you you sick and you stay in the house for a week, you're excited to go back out. Like, it's like, damn, like, now I can't go back out. But... You know, I just said, fuck it. I'm going to take this time to just create. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Be in the studio as much as I can. Be in front of the camera as much as I can. You know, just work as much as I can, even though we can't do shit. Right. We Figure kind of, out a way, you know? I mean, we it's should true. kind of take advantage of that, right? We've got yeah. so much free time on our hands. Yeah. Like, content, content. And trust me, I definitely spent my days just doing nothing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I definitely spent some days just like, fuck it. Like, doing nothing. But you got to take those days sometimes. Mm -hmm. like, Definitely. It was like uh, with your COVID pack, uh, package project was like most of those songs kind of already uh, uh, tracks that you've had in the past. Yeah, or was yeah, it like, yeah. That's like the, like that's like all the music like that I wanted to release from like 2019. Probably like 2019. Mm -hmm. The Throwaways project was the first project I dropped. And that was like Throwaways from like 2017, 2018. And like I was just like, fuck it. Like I'm going to just drop eight. You know, boom, another eight. Mm -hmm. And now I'm about to drop the deluxe with another eight. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a 16-track album. Just content on content. Yeah, right? it's going to yeah. be hard. Yeah, for sure. So man. the only thing I'm missing for that, John, is like two more songs. I got to make like these little interludes and stuff. And then, I don't know, I'm going to drop it as soon as possible, bro. I'm going to just keep gunning. Yeah, interludes are hard to do, right? Yeah, like, it's, it's like um, you got to make a blend, you know? Yeah, because... Uh, but I'm finding some vibes. Because, like, you see it, I'm sure you've probably seen this, Brian, like, in, mm. in songs and albums, like, interludes can, like, really kind of throw off the album. Or it can really kind of tie yeah, the album yeah, together. Yeah. So, yeah, tricky tricky thing to do. It's even harder to kind of make, a, in my opinion, probably, like, an actual song. Yeah. You know, doing a really good interlude. Yeah. Yeah. How's making all that? Because I've seen you put out 21 tracks this, this year alone, yeah. and we're only in May. How, how are you going, like, churning out music? Is it is it hard for you? Yeah. At I did all? 21 like, this year already? Yeah. yeah. It's for crazy, real? man. He's killing like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't I'm even like, count. How do you put out that much music in, like, five months? Man, yeah. I'm trying to put out 100 this year, then. That's Fuck crazy. Me. It's just like, yo, like, I love to make music, you feel me? Yeah, Like, yeah. if I hear a beat, and, like, it's better now, because, like, I work with Swish, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You guys know Swish is, obviously. Yeah. Like, this guy is, like, responsible for, like, half the hot shit that's going on out here mm -hmm. right now. It's crazy yeah, to see. Yeah, like, he's, ten, he's actually 10% of the Real Melbourne playlist. I and, like, that's consistent as easily, well. Easily, yeah. easily. He's got that know, mentality, right? same and, mentality. And, 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 like, me and him being around each other is mad fire right now, because that's my cousin, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we've been doing this since we was kids, and now it's like, all right, we here now, so let's do it on a big scale, like, and mm -hmm. I, I, I do my best to motivate him, he do his best to motivate me, and we just keep each other going. There we go, man. Yeah. Yo, speak on the early days, man. So, like, you're born in Melbourne, but yeah. at young age, you moved to Philly, right? Yeah. Well, like, I moved to Philly, and then I moved to uh, uh, Bucks County. So, I'm really from Bucks County, PA. Mm -hmm. But, like, nobody fucking in Australia knows what the <laughs> fuck Bucks County is. So I just say I'm from Philly because I do a lot of work in Philly. Yeah. I'm always in Philly. I lived in Philly at one point. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's just like, I'm really from Bucks County. I moved here 07. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the U.S. in 07. Okay. With my mom. And then we just never left. Mm -hmm. Until I just came back here three months ago. Right. Yeah. But what was the reason for the switch? Because you know, um, it's pretty huge. Melbourne to Philly. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a crazy story for real. Um, my pop passed away mm -hmm. when I was eight. So this is 2005. And then I went to Philly with my mom to like 
go be with my grandma, my my dad's mom, because mm-hmm. I was real tight with my dad's mom and my family over there. So I, they all lived over there. My pop is from Philly. My mom's from Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Okay. So my pop's family's over there. I went over there for the summer. I just loved it, you know. Just being on my grandma's block, the corner store's right there. Asked my grandma for a dollar or two, four quarters to get you a lot back then, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Watch my cartoons, chill with my grandma. It was a great vibe. Yeah. And I was just like, fuck it, let's just move here. So you, was your mom's family in Australia at the time? Or? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. My Must mom's family still are out here. Yeah? Or was That's who I be around, you know what I'm saying? That's swishing them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So was your mom here or was your mom still in, in oh, the my US? My mom's still in the US right oh, okay. now. Okay, so you, you're yeah. close to your mom but not to the rest of the family was yeah, still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. good you still had someone close with you over there because it would have it been a hard time yeah. you know, going through all that. Man, life switched when I moved to America. Yeah. Fast, fast, switched up, like... I had a great childhood here, you know what I'm saying? A legendary childhood, you know what I'm saying? And then, like, it kind of just switch up when it's just you and your mom in America. Yeah. And, like, then she get laid off from her job because the economy's fucked up or whatever the case may have been, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then now it's just us two. But we figured that shit out, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We, It got to a point where, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even want to get too deep into it, but, like, it's just crazy to see how, like, me and my mom, like, we kind of like made it in a sense. Mm. Like I don't really give a fuck about this music shit because we already kind of made it in a sense. But like I don't know, I'm fried, bro. I be talking with them hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's no, good. That's cool, Things man. like yeah. that make you close. Yeah, you know? they, they bring man, you and your mom. Made me and my strong mom bond, tight yeah? as hell. Like we yeah. built a whole business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like I, yo, we she ain't had no job, and I worked at Wawa. Fuck. Like, how what is Wawa? For Wawa years? is like the most legendary shit. We need to get one here. <laughs> I want to be the founder of like the first Wawa here. To be uh, honest is it like with a you, food? Food we gotta get Wawa and Chick Fil A in Melbourne. Uh, yeah, 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 Chick Fil A. Yeah. I mean, we always hear it, but we, gotta like, we just get don't have Wawa anything. and Chick Fil A yeah. in Melbourne. And like, I, I gotta get like a hundred million dollars first so I can do it first. Because like, the first person that does that is gonna be rich as hell. <laughs> but what's Wawa? Tell us what Wawa. Wawa is, is like the most littest convenience store ever. Okay, better than Seven Eleven then. Better trash Seven Eleven. <laughs> we won't go to 7-Eleven if Wawa right there. All right. Yeah, but what does Wawa have that 7-Eleven doesn't? They got, a, they got like an open deli, like two. And they got like mac and cheese. You oh, make sandwiches, hoagies, chicken sandwiches, all that fire shit. Yo, speak on Philly cheese, like, oh, steaks. Come on. <laughs> cheese steaks. Speak on that, man. Like, I'm going to start missing shit. <laughs> I'm going to start missing shit, man. Because, like, uh, that, that's kind of like the, the legendary food, like, that we hear. Out of Philly. Like, out of Philly, oh, yeah. Man. I kill for Steve's drone right now. Man, it's just legendary. Like, it's steak, cheese, bun. You know what I'm saying? Some yeah. fried onions, whatever else you want. Ketchup, man. You know what I'm saying? Spice it up however you want. It's just yeah. legendary. It's yeah. a legendary thing. You know what I'm saying? I wish we had that here, too. But is there anything, like, even remotely close to that in... No, nothing. I haven't seen nothing remotely close. Uh, yeah. You have. You might have to check out. They got the this American spot in diners. Philly. Yeah. They got this spot in Philly, bro. It's the most expensive cheesesteak in the city, I think. It's got like it's made with like Wagyu A5 beef, and it's like that beef is like two hundred dollars a pound. Mm. So it's probably like way more a kilogram. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Kill you faster, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's so crazy. it's like it's like a hundred dollars. They put like truffles in it. It's crazy. You've had a couple of them. Huh? Have you had a couple of them? No, I never had it. Uh, I just know what the fuck it is. Because <laughs> it's like a legendary cheese thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair I right. watched fucking YouTube videos on it and shit. I never got a chance to go. I wanted to go the last week before I left, but I didn't make it. Mm. Well, yeah, that might be something, uh, you know, you might have to tap into. The no, for sure. Spirit, huh? Yeah, get yeah. some business going down here. It must have been... Um, well, did I you do want to get business going down here, for sure. Did you see much of a difference as a kid when you moved from here to Philly like did you notice stuff at that age when you moved there where the, the, the yeah. like, society and just how life is different yeah, yeah? not really not really not until like I grew you, you know yeah. what I'm saying like I didn't really think about none of that shit I ain't gonna lie until like recently <laughs> okay. you know what I'm saying like society and shit you think about that when you start working and yeah. it's like I didn't start thinking about that shit until I started working. Before that, life was fun. It was cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How was school? Like the change of schools, it's like you know. Man, high I guess school. You grew up with an Australian high school was accent. Fire. Did I you had have an Australian out. accent by the time you went there? Uh, or you still had a bit yeah, of an question. Yeah. Because yeah. that would have been I, an interesting transition. Yeah, I yeah. did have an Australian yeah. accent. Cause Cause you lost that now. Yeah, it's, right? gone. it's gone. It's man. gone. It's <laughs> gone. It's been gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's been gone since I was ten. You know. I just remember. When I moved there, I started playing football. 
when I started playing football, that's when I started talking different. That's all I like okay. remember, you know. Yeah. By the time I moved there in June, by the time I got to school in September, my accent was gone. Two months. It was just gone. Damn, that's quick. You yeah. must have just been in the community with like all the other kids. I was and just, just like, outside got into every it. day. Yeah, yeah. I was outside every day. Exactly. Playing football, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Doing bad shit. You're running around. Yeah, yeah. Just but being in their be, neighborhood. But to be fair, you probably lost your accent pretty quickly. Yeah, right? I, I, yeah I think it took a couple of years, though. A few years. Maybe like a two years. Yeah, because like I think that. when I. And you were older as well, yeah. so. Where might are you take originally more time. from? From Kenya. From Kenya. Yeah, so I moved here 2010. I was about 15. And I guess. By 17, 18, I already started having like an Australian accent. But it's the same mm. thing, man. You, yeah. you hang around people yeah. who speak this like that. Look at Ben just, Simmons. Yeah, he's yeah. like half Australian, half yeah, American. He's losing his Australian yeah, accent so quick, man. It's yeah. gone. You'll hear it every now and then, but like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's pretty much gone, to be honest. Yeah, man. gone. There we go, man. Okay, well, um, speak on music, man. How'd you first get into music? My dad was heavy into music. Mm-hmm. For real, for real. Uh, he was a singer. So. I used to play the drums when I was real little. Mm-hmm. That's when I first really got introduced to music, and I was good. I used to play with him in the band and shit. Mm. Like, when I'm, like, four or five, it was lit. And then I got introduced to rap music right around, like, Usher year time. 2004. Yeah, mm. like, around 2003, 2004, yeah. I got introduced to rap music. I bought Snoop Dogg's album with Drop It Like It's Hot on there. And yeah. I bought a Ludacris album, the one that had Get Back on there, mm-hmm. Red Light District. Mm-hmm. I bought them the albums. And then I bought the Kanye album, uh, Late Registration. Mm-hmm. That was a fire year for hip-hop. Yeah, Holy it was shit. fire. Yeah. And then I had, I was, of course, I was huge on 50. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had a signed Massacre album. I met nah, 50, you know nah. what I'm saying? So this is like <laughs> crazy. crazy shit. I met yeah. 50 when I was like seven, eight, probably. Was this a concert or something? Yeah, yeah. this concert, Rod Labor Arena. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you came back then? Oh, was I was it? here. I was here. That's before you left, huh? Okay. Yeah, this is before I left. Oh, before you left. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm just, my, before I left, all the memories I got from before I left is fire. Mm. I ain't gonna lie. Like, my <laughs> childhood was so lit. My mom, like, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my mom. She was legendary. You know what I mean? Like, she always made sure life was amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Took mad care of me. Took care of my friends. You know, we used to do fun shit every weekend. Like, mm-hmm. but, you know, life changed. You go through shit. Yeah. True. Change fast. Hmm. So, uh, when did you first realize, like, I guess you had a knack for this, you know, for this rapping thing? Uh, I don't know. I always thought I, I thought I was trash until like. I yeah, yeah I th- always thought I was trash until probably like tenth, eleventh grade. Mm-hmm. That's why I started like getting the hang of it. And then I was like, fuck it, this is dope. And then I made, like, my first hot song, and I was like, oh, yeah, I got to keep doing this shit. Mm-hmm. There we go. Were you getting uh, a lot of love, you know, from the yeah, 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 yeah. Ma'am, I got a lot of supporters back home, like, where I'm from, mm-hmm. like, in the county, like, for sure. Yeah, man. It's yeah. dope. Bro, when I, um, when I spoke to you, man, I asked, like, about your influences, because, like, those early 2000s days, like, Philly rappers were just, like, the shit, man. Like, you yeah. had Beanie, Beanie, you had Cassidy, yeah. uh, Eve, um... Who else you had? Freeway, Freeway you know, Meek, uh, you know. But but Meek came off later. But you yeah. know, you said your biggest influence was Meek, though. Yeah. So as soon as that. I as soon as I heard Flamers too, it was over with. Mm-hmm. That's all I listened to. You know what I'm saying? And then anything Meek that had Meek on it, I was on it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm watching it. I'm, yo, like I don't know. When I first heard that shit, that's like that's when I fell in love with it. That's when I bought my MacBook. You know what I'm saying? And my little USB mic so I could rap. Mm-hmm. Like, and really actually rap on a song and make shit like that. Like, I don't know. That's when I really got into it. Yeah. And, and I guess another thing, like... Meek is like the GOAT. Right, right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, like, I'm thinking about those early freestyle videos, right? Uh, where Philly's, like, in the streets of Philly, you know, and he's got all of his boys, you know, reciting mm. his rhymes. Like, that's, like, a thing in Philly, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's so... You know so how many in- videos I watched? Of, right. Like that? Like, you know how many legendary videos there is like that? Yeah. Like, that we've watched every day when we wake up. Like, mm-hmm. we wake up and just put that shit mm-hmm. on. But the that's so unique to Philly, though. That's not, like, anywhere else. Like, nah, they do that shit everywhere else, but it's... But it not, was not heavy. like you guys, yeah, it I was feel heavy like. It's, it's a different vibe. It's a different feel, you know? Like, we had the rap DVD, man, in Franklin Mills. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, in the mall. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, it's like... I remember that shit. <laughs> Must be. Is it a big pre- presence? Does Meek Mill play a big pr- 
presence in Philly. Can you feel yeah, Philly when you like, just walk around the streets and whatever? Um, nah, when you're like, outside, when when you're amongst a group of people and stuff. I mean, yeah, it's like, like in malls, it, all that. Every sort of stuff. every time you go to the club, it's guaranteed if the DJ does not play uh, Dreams and Nightmares. <laughs> like, what the fuck is he doing? Yeah. Like, what is he doing? Yeah, 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 like, yeah. every time that song come on, no matter what, you could be ready to fight. That shit come on, you, you Hold rap on, it every, every word. Yeah, as, soon yeah. as, a, as soon as you hear the piano, it's yeah. like, fuck it. I used to pray for times. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is a moment. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That shit is a moment. Like, yeah, me, me, me got Philly on Smash, bro, forever. What else goes off in the Philly clubs? A lot of shit. Five year four. All oh, right, yeah, the drill shit. Hey, hey, hey! All that shit go crazy. Yeah. Pop smoke go crazy in the club. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't really heavy into the clubs. Like, I ain't gonna lie to you. Mm-hmm. Back home, they was cool, but like, Philly is just like I don't know. I feel like it's not many options. Like, we need more options of clubs, like mm-hmm. lit lit clubs to go to. But they got some cool clubs over there for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel you, man. How's, yeah. how's the music community in Philly, like, for upcoming artists? Um, 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 like, just community-wise, like, people working together, collabs, all that sort of stuff, studios. Uh, I always thought it was kind of, like, weird, to be honest. It's like, I don't know, I feel like people only want to work with you when they, it, it'll benefit them. Okay. And if it's not going to benefit them, people, like, but it's like nobody really I wish it was more like I don't know unity uh, positivity right? and unity in Philly mm-hmm. is what I'm trying to say but it's like it's, I don't know whoever work with each, with them each other it's like I don't know you don't really see it you know what I'm saying if this pop rapper coming up and this rapper coming up I never seen the young ones like really mix into it I don't mm-hmm. know they would rather go try get features from other big artists you know what I'm saying which makes sense, but it's just like, I don't know. That's There's so many people trying to rap in Philly. So it's always going to be like, oh, they from here, they from there. We don't fuck with them. Blah, blah, blah. It's a lot of that. Yeah, that's weird because like, it seems so community-based in Philly. That you, you'd think that everyone's kind of collaborating and building themselves up to get bigger. but um, A lot of people do. Mm-hmm. But you got to think about it. There's so many people doing it. Yeah. How are you going to see them all? I thought it'd be better collabs. Um, or people working together a bit more because they're all on like that same level trying to get up. You know, mm. one thing me and Alex always talk about um, in Melbourne is that you know we don't have that that space yet for music being seen as, um, especially Melbourne music, Australian music being put up up there compared to American music. So mm. um, people don't see. I don't. I don't see a lot of people collaborating as much. Everyone's yeah. just trying to make their name in the scene yeah. um, of course there are people who come together and, and make music like the little groups here and there mm-hmm. but um, yeah I just want to know from like a place where music is seen as a big thing and it's really important because you guys are driven a lot by music in yeah. the US and you guys drive a lot of the international sort of music so yeah. it, I thought you'd have a different sort of um, look on on working together but yeah if that's yeah. not there it's a bit hard when everyone's just trying to and eat it, everyone else it, it's harder for me too though because like i'm not i don't live in philly no more you know what i'm saying so it's hard for me to like reach out i'm like a county boy you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. they're gonna look at me different either way you know what i mean are you an outsider now it's like nah you i wouldn't call it an outsider i feel like i don't know how far is the county from Philly? Like, I don't even know. Like, if I blew up, I don't even know if Philly would claim me because I lived in the county for so long. How you far is the I'm county? Saying? I get in the city in, like, 10 minutes. You know what I'm no saying? Way. Like, Like, if I'm going to go downtown, like, if I really need to be downtown in, like, 30 minutes, I get there in 30 minutes. So it's not even that far. You could say it's like, is it like Melbourne suburbs for the people who don't know, I guess? like Yeah, it's, it's like, like, I tell people I'm from Melbourne, but I live up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? But it's like, it's still fucking... I don't know. No, it is still Melbourne, like yeah. where you're yeah. from. Like yeah. it's still in that border. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's interesting. They must. Pl- is it very big? The it's, segregation. It's different parts of Philly. It's like North Philly. It's South Philly. Southwest is Northeast. Is it Northeast as segregated? Northeast is like considered like, you know what I'm saying? Different yeah. things. I don't really want to put names on them, but because yeah. everything's like everybody got something to say about every spot. I think you you guys have history, and that's probably what plays towards your side. Because we, I, pay attention I, to I, feel, that shit. I feel like in Melbourne, whether you're southeast or you're west or whatever, mm-hmm. you just consider yourself as a Melbourneian artist. Yeah. Especially because we're still a small community growing, mm-hmm. that everyone in the city is just Melbourne. Mm-hmm. No matter if you're like 
two hours drive down that way or one hour drive up there yeah which is nice to think of but yeah, yeah it must be and you guys have a bigger population as well so you have to yeah, realize yeah, people so are going to make people. yeah people are going to make smaller communities here and then be mm-hmm. strong about the small communities yeah hmm. yeah it's yeah it's, it's definitely it definitely seems like a regional thing then for you guys like yeah. um did you get any sort of uh because like philly had a bit of a rise with like the melodic you know mm. uh rappers like That's you know with the uzi, uzi game, and yeah. the pnb rocks like yeah. do you have a bit of influence from them as well yeah for sure yeah. like you get i get influenced by i feel like everything i ever heard that i liked you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying so uzi and rock definitely got some influence in the mm-hmm. sound for sure yeah man yeah like, even... we got a lot of tough melodic artists mm-hmm. like we're we're like i feel like philly's like starting to get a knack for that you yeah. know what i'm saying these young kids is hot like these these kids is hot in philly yeah it's is Vellas like, from philly you did a song with uh arab Vellas. Huh? Vellas. i don't think yeah. I've ever heard he's of like him. sort of like that melodic you know trap sort mm, of artist no, anyway I don't, yeah. I, don't yeah. I don't know if he is or not but arab like you know stamped yeah, in philly that, you know I what stamp. yeah always legend yeah man legend yo i did want to ask you this because um it's kind of been going viral on the internet recently like mm-hmm. arab um kind of like self snitching on himself right there's like mm. all these like sort of com- yeah. uh compilations out of vlad, out of vlad interviews not just shit. not just vlad just like him just you know um yeah. with a bunch of different like outlets and interviews yeah. and like kind of snitching on himself and um and now um, i think he's going to be in prison for a very long time, very long time um probably. what are your thoughts you know exactly. when you kind of see stuff like that i just hate to see it you know mm. i hate to see it happen you know what i'm saying that shit is affecting people's lives. Like, that whole case is really affecting people's lives. People I know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, fuck. Shit's fucked up, you know? It's like, he did, yeah, I don't know. I don't really want to have too much comment on it, but, like, I just don't, I hate to see it, mm. you know? Yeah. Hate to see it. Yeah, for sure, man. All right, man. Well, uh, we can move on to uh, some other things, man. Like, uh... I think uh, we, we talked about Philly a lot, but, you know, you've actually come back to Melbourne now. Mm. Um, when did you move back to Melbourne? February. Okay. So, fairly recent, just before Corona then. Probably yeah, the right timing then, right? Like, right before it got big. Like, Corona was still a thing, but it, like, wasn't a big deal. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, what was um, what was the reason to move back? I was bored, bro. <laughs> bro, right. I was bored. And I just felt like I didn't have enough time to do this. You know, like the shit I need to be doing. Mm-hmm. So was, was there like other distractions, kind of? Yeah, distractions? always, yeah. always distractions. Back home, it's like I can get distracted so easily. This by work, by girls, by you know anything. Mm. If I'm working forty hours a week, not on myself, but towards something like that's not, you know, it's like how do you even? And then you got a girl, or you don't, you know, it's like hard as shit. Mm. Just leave, fuck it. You, you talk yeah. about women a lot in your music. Um, yeah. How, how's the the ladies' um, situation happening? Uh, right now, I don't talk to girls. Nah. I don't talk to girls at all. I talk to them here and there, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not really, like, focused on them right now. Yeah. I'm trying to, like, be cool with myself right now. It's like, fuck it, I already done did that shit. It's like, whatever. Do you feel it's a massive distraction to, like, your music? Like a... Yeah. Yeah. Like, when you devote, like, a lot of time, like, it'd be times where I'm hanging out with a girl and it's like, I want to do, like, something, like, say I want to write to a beat, but she wouldn't watch Netflix. It's like, fuck it. I watch Netflix. Worst thing that's going to happen is I'm going to tag, you know what I'm saying? It's like, fuck it. Boom, now I'm not writing a song. Hmm. little shit like that like, yeah. you know what I'm saying and yeah. if we hanging out every day how many times I'm gonna pick the pussy over writing a song <laughs> you know what I'm saying 100 times right? <laughs> you know what I'm it's saying true. Yeah. yeah but you know I'm not distracted right now I feel great like you mm. know what I'm saying it's great I'll be knocking these beats out yeah is it driving you mental a little bit like just not not being around women and shit yeah, yeah. a little bit yeah it's yeah. cool though <laughs> it's cool though. Nah, it's a bit like that. I think I think just in general this time having- It's like why why the fuck I'm gonna look for like it's kinda dumb to kinda look for new girls to talk to right now anyway. Right now, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like fuck it, I might as well just take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. Just keep to myself anyway. And save your money on dates and Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I don't right. even think I'm trying to take girls out on dates and none of that shit. Like I'm trying to just be cool enough to just have them around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for real, for real. <laughs> Yeah, man. Fair enough. Well, um, well, shit. Now, like, now that you've kind of been back in Melbourne, uh, actually, no, I want to go back a little bit because, um, 
because you've collaborated a lot with, I believe, is a really talented R&B singer, man, Kid Travis. Legendary. Guy. Yeah, right. So how did, the, how did the two of you link up? How did you develop, you know, such a great chemistry, you know, um, with music? Because, yeah, he's very, he's insanely legend. talented, man. He's yeah. a legend. Like, mm. I see him do it. You know what I'm saying? Legendary. Like, you want to know, like, how I met him and shit? Yeah, yeah, just uh, like, and, and break down kind of the story there. Met in school. Yeah. I made music. He made music. You know what I'm saying? We was both, like, learning. You know what I'm saying? We made it. Our first collab when we was probably, like, 14 or 15. Mm. And then we had class together in high school, so we was always joking and shit. He always making beats. I'm always rapping. He's singing and shit. It's a fun time. Had class again. Like, that's just my homie. Like, mm. at the end of the day, like, yeah, we make music together, but at the end of the day, that's really my brother. You feel me? Mm. Like, it's mad, like, history and chemistry. Mm -hmm. And that's just what it is. Right. And you've, I guess you've kind of linked him and Adrian up together. Because, yeah. you know, they've had a couple of tracks together yeah. as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, they see each other. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I guess they're, so, they're kind of uh, very similar with, uh, you know, their styles and music. So, mm -hmm. like, what do you see is, like, the differences, like, working with both of them? Um, Trav will make the most amazing shit i ever seen and heard out of like some shit that I never thought he could make it out of. You know what I'm saying? Like he just played with the shit so much like until like it's just like and then he just hits like he's hitting space bar like a million times but like that last time he hits it it's like oh shit. Like you know what I'm saying? Just watching him work is crazy. Swish is like more technical like he'll make that shit fast. Like it'll be fast <laughs> as fuck. Like it'll be boom it's done. I'm like oh shit the beat's done? Like two lines in and shit you know what i'm saying all right so so normally like uh he's creating on the spot you know he doesn't really have beats ready and then you're just writing to it and um i usually like when when i collaborate with swish like on a beat mm. i just be like i just usually bring him a sample or something mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying sometimes i make the whole beat and then he'll just arrange it or some shit like, mm -hmm. but i don't know we're, we're still getting our chemistry we're still building yeah. it but like once a lot we, of catching up to do yeah it's right? a lot of catching mm -hmm. up to do yeah. sometimes we just want to kick it mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so it's like you know but it's cool it's cool spot yeah that's cool man and um, I guess your uh, your mentality for dropping so much music and mm -hmm. uh, getting uh, getting out there and just feel like is, is it tough to get yourself a little bit known you know in Melbourne now yeah. that you're, you are kind of an outsider like yeah. yes you're from here but like yeah, you know, yeah. not many people are kind of aware of you now yeah yeah so it's like you know we're gonna build that up that's mm -hmm. that's why I'm gonna just keep dropping you know I got some fans in Melbourne already so mm -hmm. it's like and I haven't even really been able to go outside yet so that's dope mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying you guys see me so that's fire mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying I'm in here doing a podcast so I'm mm -hmm. just like as long as I feel like as long as I keep working that shit will trickle down and start happening on its own kind of not on its own it's a lot of work to be done but that shit will start happening I'll start getting seen the more that I, the more I do yeah mm -hmm. and you're looking to collab with a lot of yeah, Melbourne artists am, if you can I, yeah I definitely am yeah for sure I, I talked to a couple of them you know got some shit going <laughs> Mm -hmm. so it's dope it's gonna be fire yeah you like uh it's it's funny i'm kind of like the uh a and r of, of, of like melbourne artists now so like yeah. if, if anyone's got like uh if they're looking for something specific like oh i need a male afro artist like i'll tell yeah. you so whatever you need Legend. i'll link you up with the right <laughs> people Legend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Alex Dickinson. Yeah. <laughs> he knows the music, the that's for sure. Yeah, yeah right. And, and that's just with doing the playlist, you know, yeah. so often, yeah. you know, like you just you just know the whole scene. Yeah. And it's so beautiful. Like, like when, when we kind of first started this, like um, me and Brian like wanted to know a lot more and, you know, get involved with this. And uh, mm. it's a beautiful thing, the what we're growing here in Melbourne. You've come in at the right time. Yeah, think, I feel know? like I came perfect time. Yeah, like yeah. I wanted to stay here. Like I came here in 2017 just to mm -hmm. visit. I wanted to stay. I didn't want to come back, but I had a girl. I had my job. Yeah. I had. I had to go. Responsibilities. Home. Yeah, yes. I had. I had to go home. But I didn't want to leave, bro. I didn't want to leave. Like, and now it's like, fuck it. I done toughed it out for three more years, and now, now when I, I finally get the chance to be here, it's like everything's just working out for me. I can record every day. I can take some pics if I want to. I can shoot a video if I want to. Why not take advantage? Mm -hmm. Like, it's crazy. This is all I ever wanted to do was just make music. So it's like, this shit is great. We got Centerlink here. We don't mm -hmm. fucking have that shit <laughs> in a fucking America. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. great. Now, we're lucky out here. Yeah, yeah we're, they take true, care, they taking care yeah, of Yeah, they take care of here, people out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It must be tough. Do you still speak to people back home yeah, with, with all this like corona thing happening and how they're dealing with the whole... It's you fucked know, up in America right yeah. now. I'm scared for motherfuckers in America right yeah. now. 
I'm just watching. I'm observing, you know. I'm just seeing, like, everybody kind of really back to regular life, it looked like. Motherfuckers still going to the beach. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Motherfuckers is like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, shit, I don't know. Good luck to them. Well, guess, well, guess speaking on that, right, like, uh, you know, in your formidable years growing up in Philly, there's like, a, there's like a thing about Philly where it's like a survival thing. It's mm. dangerous. Uh, yeah, did well, you... it's not like that for me. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, it's so, not like that for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I like, my mom saw like how it was. Shit, I think it was like 2006 or 2007. It was a real bad summer. A lot of people died in Philly that summer. Mm. And like, I wanted to live in America and be close to my grandma. But my mom just didn't want me to grow up in Philly. And my dad kind of told my mom, like, before he passed away, like, yo, whatever happens, just don't raise my son, like, in America. Mm -hmm. Because he was probably, like, scared for me to grow up in that type of environment. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Being a black man coming from that community. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But but I wanted to live in America, so my mom had found fucking Ben Salem, Mm -hmm. which is, like, 30 minutes that way. Yeah. And it's, like, a nice little suburb. It's a nice school. You know what I'm saying? white picket fence houses and shit it's like a nice area so i lived in ben salem from 2008 to when i left mm-hmm. i moved to langhorn recently but right it's like two minutes away well i guess you were, were fortunate enough not to be uh yeah. involved in all that sort of yeah because that shit is crazy man it's real like for i know people in that environment of course and it's like fuck like mm-hmm. what can you do like you you live there yeah, it's true. And that, you want to sell drugs, like? <clears throat> do you feel like in that community, in those places, because you've probably experienced it more than we have, they almost don't have a choice. It's it's hard for them to get out of that sort of lifestyle. Because mm. we it's, are very privileged it's here. A, you know? It's a cycle. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a cycle. Like, shit. You you do what you see. You know what I'm saying? There's no other real way to put it. Yeah. It's like you're a product of your environment. Yeah. So you can't, I can't, I don't judge nobody, you know what I'm saying, for what they're doing or how they, how they doing, they, how they running their life, you know what I'm saying? That's in them environments because like, how can I judge them? Yeah. Well, when you say cycle, you mean like a kind of like a generational thing. Yeah. Like you'll see OGs do it so yeah. then you'll do it and then you'll But like the youngins do it different, of yeah. course, because like as generations go on, shit yeah. happens different and yeah. now it's just like a bunch of wild savages like everywhere. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They just want to eat. And do anything for it, huh? Do anything for it. Mm. I understand the mentality because, like, you know, it's like, fuck, what can you do? Mm. You just want to win. I know I want to win deep down in my heart, and I I feel like if I was in a situation where, you know what I'm saying, I had to do the most, fuck it, I'd probably do the most too. But thank God my mom, you know what I'm saying, did what she did. My mm-hmm. mom's a legend, bro. Mm-hmm. She a legend. All credit, all credit to her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you see me, thank my mom. Man. Yeah, man. Uh, people can't see this right now because you're covered up, but mm. you've got crazy tats on you, man. you got yeah. the double O on you. <laughs> um, uh, like It almost seems like you got some AKs there as well, but is is that nah, something else? No, nah, I got I got the double O's. I got an airplane here. Oh, my bad. My I got bad. the <laughs> John here. I don't, I, don't, I don't got that many. They just big. You all know right. what I'm saying? But, but the double is huge though I mean yeah. it's very noticeable like in your uh, picks you know what I'm saying yeah. I, I got that shit mm-hmm. I got that shit after I made this song Oh My Oh My was one of like my bigger most streamed songs and like before I dropped the song I just fucking I don't know why I did it I just was like fuck it I'm gonna just tag double on my shit mm-hmm. just wanted it you know what I'm saying it's yeah. like it's like perfect fucking cause I'm double O like mm. can't change your name yeah, now it's like, <laughs> yeah they're exactly. going back it's now it's dope, man. Yeah. I never had no, nobody really say anything bad about it. Mm-hmm. I like it. You know what I mean? I love tattoos. I want to get more, but it's like, when are they going to open up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, big facts, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to ask, like, what's the kind of, uh, yeah, what's the biggest thing you've kind of learned from being in the business and just your life in general, man? Like, what's your biggest takeaway? Uh, just being existing in this world, man. Nobody going to give you shit. Nobody's going to hand you anything. You feel me? Just gotta go get that shit. Put your head down and grind. You feel me? It's like fuck. What can you do? Like, what else can you do? What? Yeah, man. Um, I, I'll also ask you this. Any last words you want to leave with before uh, we wrap um, things up, man? My name is Double O Smooth. I'm gonna be dropping a lot of music. Um, I'm happy I made it through this interview because I'm hella stoned right now. 
<laughs> and I hope you stone too. Um, shit, fuck with me, you gonna catch a vibe. That's it. That's what it is, man. Um, we'll take a brief intermission and we'll That's get into it. these freestyles, man. Easy.